Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Ehang holding stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Ehang is a Chinese company that started in 2014. It develops and manufactures autonomous aerial vehicles and passenger vehicles. Aerial vehicles do not have a person inside of them, but passenger vehicles can carry a human. It is the first company to develop a working passenger autonomous vehicle. The company has conducted more than 10,000 test flights around the world. Other companies have a few hundred test flights. Test flights are how you improve your technology. The company's products are used in China for aerial cinematography, photography, emergency response, and survey missions. The company is also working with other countries. Some of those countries are working with Ehang to develop an autonomous flying taxi. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 5.8 billion market cap. They're trading at 108 a share and they have 55 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So the company has negative free cash flow every year since they're investing a lot in their business to grow it, plus they don't have much revenue. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. That's also negative each year. Revenue is a sales for the company and they don't have much sales. It did grow from 5 million to 27 million. This is the company's income statement. All the numbers on their financials are in Chinese Yuan. So you can divide by seven to convert them to US dollars. All the numbers on my Excel spreadsheet are converted to US dollars. Since we're looking at the ticker that trades on the New York Stock Exchange. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. For example, cost of labor and cost of materials. Then below that is their gross profit. They do have positive gross profit each year. Below that is operating expenses. R&D is probably a high operating expense for this company, research and development. Then below that is operating income and they have negative operating income each year. Below that is the interest they receive on their investments minus the interest they pay in their debt. Below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments or other non-cash gains and losses. Below that is pre-tax income, then their taxes. They also have earnings or losses from equity interest. These are non-cash items. This is the gains or losses from the company's investments and other companies. The bottom line of the income statement is their net income and that's negative every year. This is a statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow and they have negative free cash flow every year. So in order for them to run their business, they issue capital stock. 34 million yuan in 2017, 300 million in 2019, and 260 million in the trailing 12 months. They do issue a little debt as well, 15 million in 2018, 35 million, then 15 million. They did pay down 18 million yuan of debt in the past three years. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow, you don't have much of a business because you cannot rely on debt and equity financing to run your business in the long term. This company, of course, has negative operating cash flow because they don't have much sales and they're still growing their business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash. Net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. To calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, then you add back the depreciation of 6.2 million, Depreciation is a non-cash expense on the income statement. It reduces your net income, but you have to add it back on the CFO section. Then they had 18 million yuan in stock-based compensation. They had negative 93 million in changes in working capital. 
even though they reported a 41 million loss, they actually lost 101 million of cash flow. Let's look at that capital structure, 47 million of equity, 6 million of debt. So they're 89% equity, 11% debt. And they can pay off all their debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have 44 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 14% and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 3.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2 billion. We divide that by 55 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $36. They're trading at 108, so they're trading at a 200% premium. It's a sell according to the model. You cannot use a traditional discounted cash flow model to estimate the future stock price because a discounted cash flow model looks at the prior cash flows and extrapolates that out into the future. They have negative free cash flow. You can't have negative free cash flow forever. That means you'll have a negative stock price, which is impossible. So based on analyst estimates and looking through their financials and trying to understand how long until they become profitable, it doesn't look like they're gonna become profitable before 2025. When a company has negative free cash flow, investors look at revenue. They're not generating much revenue relative to their stock price. And their revenue is only $27 million. The reason their market cap is so high relative to their revenue is because investors are looking towards the future. But just remember, every company that generates $10 billion of revenue a year, there are thousands of company that generate no revenue or little revenue. So that's the risk you need to take if you're gonna hold this stock long-term. But if you sell quickly, you might be able to make a lot of money, but that's timing the market. And no one can really do that in the long-term successfully. The stock was flat for over a year since it IPO'd, then has been really driven up the past few weeks. The stock has gone up over 600% in the past 52 weeks, much better than S&P 500 at 16%. The low was eight, the high was 109 and the stock is trading well above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 2.5 million shares are traded each day on this stock, and of the 55 million shares outstanding, 10 million are on float, so it has a really low float percentage, and 1.5% of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you would have lost money for over a year, but if you held tight, you would have had a great return on investment, over 600%. That's an annual return of 440%. The owner of the company has 42% of the stock, then GGV has 13%, then another individual connected to the company has 12%, then Sequoia, then another person connected to the company has 6%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market's 10, the median is 14, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 219. So investors are paying $219 for $1 of revenue. That's a terrible price sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 125, also another really bad ratio. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. They can easily cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 329 million yuan of cash, 60 million of receivables, and 18 million of inventory. So usually companies like this, startups that are trying to grow their business, tend to have really high current ratios because they're going through so much cash to run their business. So the company does seem to be well capitalized. They had negative free cash flow, but they have 50 million of working capital. But they're gonna need a lot more working capital. I can't even imagine how much over the next few years to grow their business. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 18 companies in the same industry as Ehang. And if the company has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If the company has a number in green, they're better than the average. Of course, there's no company that does what this company does. There's no company that makes flying cars. 
But Ehang is in the aerospace industry, and all these other companies are also in the aerospace industry. So it's the only companies that I can compare them to. So they have terrible price multiples. They do have a really good current ratio. They have a lot of cash on hand from their capital raises. They have a terrible ROE. They are doing well in debt. They're pretty low in market cap at 5.8 billion, and they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 200% premium, but I think this stock could go way higher and higher because the stock price is based off the supply and demand of the market. I think there's a lot of people really excited about this stock. That's why it has been going up so much in the past few weeks. It could go up to $1,000 a share. It's impossible to predict the market in the short term, but in the long term, the financials will tell the whole story. But I don't know how this story is going to unfold. They may have hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue at some point. Nobody could have predicted Amazon when they were losing so much money their first 10 years would have had the amount of profitability, revenue, and market share that they have today. So this is a really exciting company and it's a really cool product. You have to bank on countries and municipalities buying into what they do. And of course, there's competition you have to be concerned about. I rank their free cash flows one out of 10 because they're always negative. I do rank their revenue five out of 10 because it is growing every year. It's really, really small, but it's growing, so I'll give them that. And I rank their ratios one out of 10. It's really terrible, their ratios. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.